I've just got five minutes, Max. I just want to ask you a couple of questions about the qualifiers, right? The teams I just want to highlight. So Group A is Namibia, Netherlands, uh, Sri Lanka, and the UAE. And Group B is Ireland, Scotland, West Indies, and Zimbabwe. Now, if you had to pick a couple of teams from both of those groups that you think will qualify, who would those be? And once we've talked about that, then I'm going to ask you about a player from both uh, from those teams. You know I want to say Namibia. Yeah, I know you want to say Namibia. Because they did it last year. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> exactly. David Visa, you got JJ Smith, Ruben Trumpelman, the breakout star from that 2021 World Cup. But of course, Captain Fantastic. The Namibian Joe Root, Gerhard Erasmus, mm-hmm. marshalling from the top and leading from the front. I think the Eagles are outside shouts, you know. Genuinely, they are one of the real top risers in T20i cricket and they've got some good experience this year as well having mm-hmm. played quite a bit of T20 cricket at the Wanderers in Vintook so watch out for Namibia hopefully fingers crossed they do get through um but in terms of of the favorites I suppose first and foremost Sri Lanka yeah goodness me Sri Lanka winners of the Asia Cup and they were playing Silverwood ball weren't they it was fantastic to watch their finishers are electric their top order is potent and I'll tell you what as well a massive boost someone who they didn't have in the Asia Cup, they've got Dushmantha Chimera back, yes. which is brilliant. So Sri Lanka, all of a sudden, from the despair of last year's really poor World Cup, all of a sudden, reinvigorated, re-energised, they're dark horses. I love this Sri Lankan team, and I love the fact that, almost like Pakistan, they are so enigmatic. Yeah. On their day, they're magnificent. If they have a bad game, though, they're probably going to get bowled out for less than 100. Mm-hmm. But I hope for our sakes as cricket fans, we get to see that first option on a little bit more of occasion because they're brilliant to watch when they're at their best. Then when it comes to the West Indies, the West Indies are interesting, aren't they? I, I fancy yeah. them to go through. But the whole thing with Shimon Hetmeyer, that really is a a big loss. Yeah, You've lost one of your talismans. Now, don't get me wrong, Shamar Brooks, outstanding option, had a brilliant CPL almost single-handedly, took my Jamaica Talawas to victory come the business end of that tournament. But Shimron Hetmeyer is a game changer. He's one of the best finishers on the planet. So, yeah, the men in Maroon, interesting that Hetmeyer's not there. Also, Yannick Carrier is a massive dark horse. Oh, Massive yeah. dark horse, but also a wild card at the same time. We saw him take one for 15 on T20i debut, but he's only played six T20 matches over the course of his entire career. No mm. pun intended. <laughs> so the thing there is if he comes good, he could be a difference maker. However, at the same time, equally, he could be terrible. We don't yeah. know. We haven't seen enough of him in T20 cricket. He doesn't even play in the CPL. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But West Indies, I fancy their chances. And then, Ajdad, I mean, I'm going to pass over to you in terms of that group A. Who, who else do you think is going to come out of that one? I, I Personally, I think Sri Lanka, obviously. But I would actually count Namibia, not just because they did it last year, but because... I, I saw a lot more uh, growth from that team that I have, the Netherlands or the UAE. Netherlands, I must say, I've seen them play against Pakistan recently. They weren't bad, right? They're very good competition, but that was an ODI series. I mm-hmm. think a T20, if you're facing Sri Lanka and if you're facing Namibia, I think for me, Namibia is just slightly above Netherlands in terms of their T20, uh, T20 strategy. UAE, unfortunately, outside of UAE or outside of Asia, I don't see him doing doing that much. So that's that's my take on it. Uh, and from Group B, Group B, I don't know. I think that Group B is the group of death from the it qualifiers, is. right? You've got four, actually three test playing nations, right? If Zimbabwe still counts, right? Zimbabwe still yeah, of course, Zimbabwe yeah, full yeah. member. And they got yeah. Luke Jonkwe as well, who yeah. was outstanding in so, 2021. So West Indies is one of the sides, but I, I, I think there's a slight chance, uh, you might disagree with me, but I think Ireland, Ireland's probably a better shout than the, than the other two just because of the hard-hitting batting they've got at the top of the order. And they have certain uh, a variety of bowlers who are able to extract a lot more from Australian conditions. Josh than, you know, Yeah, there we go. Right? Yeah. <laughs> than someone uh, from Scotland or Zimbabwe. But who do you think? Who's, who's another option for yourself? Yeah, I, I, I do fancy Ireland. I've got mm. to say, Josh Little's going to be very interesting. I mean, he's yeah. had an outstanding 2022 across franchise tournament, so I'd fancy his chances. I think Zimbabwe, though, they're going to be interesting. Mm. I think, again, in the batting department, it might let them down, but the they've bowling. got Luke Jonkwe. 
So good. The They've got Luke Zhongkwe. <laughs> he can do everything, though. That's the thing. He can come and score 40 of 10 or 40 of 15 and then come out and take four wickets for like 12. Right? He's that type of bowler. And it's really annoying when it's Pakistan facing him because Pakistan can't find a way to face Muzurabani or Luke Zhongwe. It's just like, oh, we don't know. I forgot about Blessing Muzurabani, another fantastic bowler. But I agree, Zimbabwe's batting is the weak link yeah. from, from, from their side. Yeah. But they have got Ryan Burl. Even Ryan and Burl. Sikandar Raza. Dude, Sikandar Raza, great option. Great, like both great names. Sikandar Raza has been on a tear as well, hasn't he, right? <laughs> this this entire year. But if I look at Ryan Burl, he's not as consistent, right? And I think with Zimbabwe, you need someone who's a bit more consistent because they're going to lose really quick wickets quite early. And Burl bats at like three or four or five, right? He doesn't bat in the top order. Or am I, am I just making stuff up right now? He's the finisher. Yeah, exactly, right? you got Burl, he finishes. Sikandar Raza is kind of a... He bats in the top six. He doesn't bat in the top three, four. So they're going to lose early wickets. And that's the issue I have with Zimbabwe. And uh, trying to find a way to crawl back? Yeah, of course. Burl can come and score 50 of 20 balls. Sikandar Raza can score a 60 of 40. Right? They can do all that stuff. It's just because of that loss in the probably in the first five to ten overs, that's going to be... Very, very hurtful from a Zimbabwe perspective, right? And I, and I want your thoughts because you, you know a lot more about other cricket nations like Zimbabwe or even like if you go above associate but below like the top eight, as I keep calling them, just because I don't know how else to categorize those teams. But what do you think? Do you think Ireland or do you think Zimbabwe as the second team to qualify with West Indies? Or have we just discarded Scotland because we're like, yeah, it's not going to happen. It's not that. I love Scotland. I, I really do. They're one of my favourite associate nations and, and have been for years. The only difference there, I think, is the seam attack. In comparison to Ireland, because Ireland have got Josh Little, I think he's an X-factor. And when it comes to associate nations like Scotland, they're missing that. Yeah. Safian Sharif, excellent bowler. And they've got some massive hitters as well. Big, big hitters. Callum McLeod, really yeah. underrated hitter yeah, yeah. in T20i cricket. But I just feel like that, that what would I say, the, the difference in calibre yes. between the sides in Group B will probably be a little bit more apparent than that of Group A, mm -hmm. where the sides are a little bit more well-balanced. So it's unfortunate for Scotland, and they must have been pretty livid to have been drawn in that group, to be honest, because yeah. if you swap one of the teams out from Group A, you'd fancy their chances to go through. Uh -huh. But I just think that West Indies will probably top that group. Yeah. And then I think it will be the winner of Zimbabwe, Ireland. And that's going to be a really interesting game. Because if Ireland go through, Paul Sterling, we talk about difference makers. He's one of the most powerful openers on the entire planet. Yeah. If he gets going, he can score 100 from 40-odd balls. He's that kind of player. So we're going to have to wait and see. It's going to be very interesting, that game. In terms of who I would say would come out of top, I quite fancy Ireland, to be honest. Yeah. I think they'll be disappointed after last year. They've got reason to come back. They've got players who are in decent form. Harry Tector, again, another very, very talented player. I'm going to go with the men in green. I'm going to go with Ireland going through with West Indies. Yeah, and uh, I'd agree with that. I would definitely agree with that. Just want to add something that just came to my mind about uh, the the nation, the nation qualifiers. Do you think maybe the qualifiers should be extended to, let's say, eight and eight? Or do you think having four and four groups is is better for the entire World Cup. It, it's tough. It's yeah. tough. Look, in an ideal world, it would be lovely to have additional teams at the World Cup. And the T20 World Cup is the ideal avenue yeah. for that, isn't it? Because it's yeah. a tournament which is played by, well, every single member of mm. the International Cricket Council. So in the future, potentially, okay. the only problem is the scheduling, isn't it? Mm -hmm, because yeah. you'd have to add in a load more games and that is the reason why we have the regional qualifiers in place mm -hmm. so you can pick out the best of the best of each region then you have the qualifiers and then you go through to the to the group stages the preliminary round of the t20 world cup so in theory it would be lovely but do i think the icc are going to change it anytime soon no i really yeah. don't see that happening but we'll have to wait and see